Hello, my name is Shannon Malloy, and this is my presentation on Valley of the Drums in Bullitt County, Kentucky. The objectives of this presentation are to look at the context under which Valley of the Drums catastrophe happened, understand a bit about the scale and scope of the contamination and cleanup efforts, as well as the legislative and regulatory significance of Valley of the Drums and ongoing activities of the site. Here are the contents of this presentation. For context, the A.L. Taylor Superfund site is the result of an illegal, unpermanent drum cleaning and waste disposal enterprise run by Arthur L. Taylor. His business model was to accept hazardous waste drums, dump their contents into pits on his land, and recycle the drums. Initially, he burned the waste, but after intervention by the Kentucky Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Protection, he began burying it instead. The site primarily served the paint and coating industries in the Louisville area, with solvent waste from the drums being dumped into the pits. The 13-acre site was excavated into pits for dumping that waste, which were later covered with soil from the surrounding hillside. The area, originally steep, was graded into a gentle slope toward Wilson Creek. Now, Wilson Creek is classified for recreational use, but beyond that, it flows into Pond Creek and then Salt River and eventually drains into the Ohio River, where Louisville gets its drinking water. Luckily, the intake for Louisville is upstream from the Salt River confluence, and also, fortunately, the site's immediate vicinity is sparsely populated, with its few residents relying on cisterns or municipal water systems due to the area's poor water quality and low yield. Here's a timeline of key events. The site was first identified in 1967 after deep-seated fires burning below the surface went for over a week. That was considered the official start of the dumping. However, Independent researcher Sam Satterley uncovered police reports suggesting illegal dumping began as early as 1966. First documented evidence of hazardous substances appeared in 1975, just before Congress passed the Toxic Substances Control Act in 1976. A.L. Taylor died in 1977 while facing court cases related to the site, but it wasn't for two more years in 1979 that the EPA returned to the Valley of the Drums to initiate emergency response actions. Events after 1979 will be discussed later in the presentation. Valley of the Drums was one of the waste site discoveries which prompted Congress to pass the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, in, or the Superfund Act, in 1980. The new funds were used to establish remedial action objectives, which included controlling emissions of particulate matter and toxic gases to protect air quality, protecting the downstream biota and recreational users from the contaminated runoff, and reducing aquifer recharge to prevent groundwater contributions to surface water contamination, as well as preventing local population from coming into direct contact with contaminated soils. The initial cleanup efforts during the first emergency action in 1979 focused on preventing further release of pollutants into Wilson Creek. A temporary water treatment system was constructed, leaking drums were secured, and an initial inventory of surface drums was made. Of those over 17,000 drums on the surface, a staggering 5,423, or 31.8%, still contained hazardous materials. This emergency action is also when the first disposal pits were discovered, and it became clear that the 11,628 empty drums had been dumped into the pits and covered with topsoil. Who knows how many, how many drums had been dumped and recycled before that in the years previous. So what did they find at the Valley of the Drum site between 1979 and 1984? Well, the short answer is a lot of things. There were over 140 different compounds identified. The most common and highest concentrations are displayed in this table. And the highest concentrations of organic contaminants identified outside the drum samples came from liquid within those excavated pits. And some of those same compounds were found in lower concentrations, but in the downgrade water samples that they took. In 1980, the Kentucky Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Protection reached out to six responsible parties who identified and removed approximately 30% of the waste remaining at the site's surface. In 1981, the EPA conducted another inspection of the site and found deteriorating leaking drums as well as renewed discharges of pollutants into Wilson Creek. It removed the remaining 4,200 surface drums and began a remedial feasibility study for a full cleanup. Now remember, this is now 1981. That is 14 years after the site was first identified. So this new phase included site sampling, hydrogeologic studies, human health risk assessments, remedial design, and cost analyses. Public meetings were also held during this time. And a 1984 assessment report was produced, focused on groundwater and surface water as possible exposure pathways for hazardous substances released from the site. It was determined, though, that the greatest risk of adverse health effects was due to individuals accessing the site. 
The EPA performed operations and maintenance activities from September 1988 through February 1990. Valley of the Drums is considered significant in the history of Superfund sites because it was designated one of the first successful site cleanups. In 1992, the EPA released an eight-page newsletter titled Superfund at Work. Showcasing the Valley of the Drums as an example of the Superfund program's success, the newsletter stated that the contamination at the site had been contained and declared the cleanup a success. Valley of the Drums was delisted from National Priorities List in 1996. Follow-up on their remedial plan included regular inspections for 30 years. However, during one of those visits, state representatives from the Superfund section were approached by a nearby resident. The resident informed them that the drums were still present in a wooded area just 700 feet northeast of the A.L. Taylor site. After the discovery, the Emergency Response and Removal Branch evaluated the site, noting it was politically maybe hot, and an internal memo suggested progress might be easier if the forested area was referred to by a different name than A.L. Taylor. The EPA determined that the site met criteria for low-priority removal, but decided it was better handled by the Commonwealth of Kentucky than the EPA. This became known as the Gully of the Drums, and... Investigations didn't resume there until 2006. They are still ongoing, and the latest investigation is scheduled for October 21st, 2024. Despite all this, the Valley of the Drums cleanup is still considered officially a success. Sampling and monitoring continue at Valley of the Drums. So here's a chart of ongoing cost of monitoring at the site. The bump in 2020 you see is when the 1988 Operation and Maintenance Plan was updated. The most recent five-year report was published in September 2023, and the next report is expected in 2028. So summarizing our key findings, the A.L. Taylor Superfund site is the result of an illegal, unpermitted drum cleaning and waste disposal project. Uh, the Valley of Drums was one of the waste site discoveries which prompted Congress to pass the Superfund Act. Despite the site being identified as an illegal waste site in 1967, no systematic cleanup efforts were made until 1971, and they were not even quote-unquote finished until 1992. Over 140 hazardous compounds were found at Valley of the Drums, and an unknown amount of waste remains buried in the ground at the site. While the site remains delisted, open investigations of the Gully of the Drums site 700 feet away are ongoing. Thank you so much for listening. Here are some references and uh, follow up with Sam Satterley if you want to know more about the Gully of the Drums.